welcome to the Talent Takeover Unfiltered. Um, as we say every time, it's always going to be a really great episode, but this one is near and dear to us always because women make great entrepreneurs. Big How facts. You doing, Big facts. I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm doing good. Um, I was actually reading about this the other day, why women make better entrepreneurs. I was like, ooh, that's going to stir up some shit, but I'm here for it. Um, especially on LinkedIn. It was on LinkedIn. And so I was like, oh yeah, I can't wait to go in. And I, so I flagged it so I could go look at the comments. Cause I'm like, I know that shit's going to get interesting. I'll get my popcorn and can't wait to see what all the men have to say about that. But <laughs> well, you know, what's funny is, um, Lincoln, uh, so my fiance, if anyone hasn't, hasn't listened before, uh, he was like, do you, do you guys do something on, you know, national woman's day, you know, which is, which is on the eighth. And I'm like, no, he's like, well, when's, um, when's national men's day. I'm like every other fucking day. <laughs> Not today. He, he just looks at me and rolls his eyes. What's funny though. Of course I had to Google it. There is a national men's day and it's, um, November 20th. So mark your calendars. <laughs> what an interesting day, like November 20th. What an interesting uh, timeline, but who even comes up with all these uh, days? I, you know what? I, I don't know, but I'm definitely there for that. I have um that uh, national whatever everyday calendar thing and oh, okay. the kids love it because there's so many national days that like you wouldn't even believe. It's like, who, again, who decided this and, and why can't I be in charge of that? Because that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> it does sound like a lot of fun and right up your alley. Like the most random shit I know they have like national corn dog day. National, I, I, I mean, I like the National Sunday, National Dog. I like all of those, right? But it makes me wonder who came up with these. How did they get a sign off on that? That you know, March 9th is going to be Corn Dog Day or whatever it is. Like, who signs off on that? But it does seem like a really fun job. Welcome to Talent Takeover Unfiltered. When it comes to working hard and keeping it real, we know our shit. Self care, happiness, inner peace, and time. I'm Brianna Rooney, and this is Taylor Bradley. Hey, y'all. And we have thrived in chaos and turned it into an art form. So, Taylor, what are we doing here today? We're here to give you a raw, under the hood view of all things recruiting and finally give credit where credit is due to a long underrated industry that's full of quote unquote experts. All right. Well, then let's take this show to the road. I don't know, but I will tell you that I now have a new business idea and I'm, I'm telling you, we got to sell, we got to sell this via Amazon. I want to do a national day, but via urban dictionary. How fun would that be? Oh, so, so some raunchy shit. Very naughty. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely right up your alley, right up our alley. Which is exactly why women make great entrepreneurs because, because we're so innovative. Okay. So uh, let's just hit you with some facts because this is something that made me sad, which made me want to do this episode. Um, but only 22.4% of small business owners in the U.S. are women. Now, it was 31% the year before. So what the hell? Where did we all go? Yeah. Ugh. Did it give any insight into that? Well, it, of course, brought up COVID. And okay. that the women were the ones that were supposed to take care of the kids, get back in the kitchen, all of those things, you know, old school style. So, um, yeah, kind of tangent, but that was sad. For sure. Okay. So what year uh, is this from? So the, um, uh, it was from the year, so the 22.4% is from 2022. Okay. And so in 2021, it was 31%. So you're just kind of seeing the, the effects of COVID. I wonder what it was yeah. before COVID. That'd That's be interesting. a interesting question. Yeah, I we're going to have to look into that. I'd just be curious <laughs> to know if it, you know, we saw a significant decline once COVID hit, you know? Like, so what was it in 2019? Pre-COVID. Yeah. That'd be really well, interesting. Know, I'm going to have to start Googling this stuff. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that and we'll have to update our listeners on that because that, that is super interesting. I, I thought that that was just a massive decline um, in just one year. It is a massive decline. So it'd be really interesting to see from like a two year span, you know, how far down mm -hmm. did we go? And then that's very interesting that you say, cause it's so true. Everybody was saying that around the time COVID happened, that the women were the ones that had to be back in the kitchen, you know, barefoot cooking the whole line, um, taking care of the kids. <laughs> Teaching. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh -huh. well, I know you, um, had class at your office. I think that's really interesting because everything that you've got going yeah. on, you're an entrepreneur and then you were having class or somebody come instruct the kids right at your office building. Yeah. We, uh, we made a pod for, um, God, I think it was like eight kids in, um, and the, the 
age range was I think seven to 10. Mm -hmm. And so we had one teacher and they, it, she was in charge of doing all of the kids um, schoolwork. And then additionally, um, cause she used to be a teacher before that she did all this other cool shit. And so like, you know, just the stuff that you can't get in school. It yeah. Was just, it was amazing. Well, um, I yeah, want us to pause okay. really quick as we talk about women entrepreneurs yeah. and look at our merch for everybody. Like, I'm like, oh, oh yeah, the robot <laughs> shimmy. Well, let's, but our let, merch. Me, let me move this. <laughs> merch, everyone. Talent takeover unfiltered. For the, our <laughs> listeners are going to be like, what the fuck are they doing over there? It, it will make sense if you're watching us, but for people just listening, they're going to be like, what are they doing? These two clearly didn't take their medication today or, have their or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, you, everyone, if you don't know, you can watch us live, you lucky little devils uh, on the Millionaire Recruiter YouTube channel, which actually is starting to get more traction, which is super exciting. So for me, I don't know about you, but um, I'd rather watch than just listen, like I'm, I'm visual kind of a thing. Yeah. So, but yeah, so visually appealing shirts here. Um, and then of course, you know, Taylor, you're, go ahead and on say your, um, your catchphrase. Yes. So, um, I heard this in a song decades ago, if any little Wayne listeners, but, um, this is the, the PC or the, the censored version, but it's, I take dirt and turn that shit to glitter, which that, um, we, this is censored and then we have uncensored coming. So part two, but yeah. I absolutely love it. It says <laughs> I turn dirt into glitter and I'm just I'm doing like a robot, little robot shimmy. Just keep shimmy. Um, just keep shimmy. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I think love it. we could definitely get some sequins on here. I know that's Kate's jam. So get some like bedazzle it on here and our little glitter. But yeah, I love it. I love the way they turned out. I love the colors. It's super comfortable. We're not trying to sell y'all on these, although we are selling them. If oh, no, we are. Interested. We, <laughs> we are trying to sell them. Again, this is about entrepreneurs. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's let's get into that. So you have yeah. some other interesting stats here about, you know, why women make great entrepreneurs. So Fortune 500 companies that hire three or more women in positions of leadership see an increase of over 60% in ROI. So That's why massive. do you think that is? Yeah. Oh, it's massive. Yeah. Well, I mean, we have a whole, a whole list here as to, you know, why that is, but, um, they tend to be more resilient or women tend to be more resilient. Um, mm -hmm. so it shows throughout just history, you know, it just, if rights are different, if salaries are different, if we're fighting to climb this, you know, giant ladder, it's just a little more harder. There's lots of facts. It's a little harder, um, that it's for women. So we just tend to be more resilient, uh, which I think is incredible. Uh, additionally, we're a lot more empathetic. So again, we're just, just to throw it out there, men, we're just, we've got statistics, we're, but it, of course there's, you know, an exception to every single rule, right? But this, mm -hmm. we're just, just shooting the shit here. So don't get mad yeah. at us. Don't get mad yeah. at us that we're so awesome. <laughs> and don't, hey, I don't, I really feel uh, like the yeah. men... Another thing that you have on here, which I think is absolutely fantastic that you made a point to put this on here. And it also goes with being resilient, that women are great at pivoting. So studies have shown that women are more likely to experiment and risk failure when experiment and risk failure when in leadership positions in businesses, making them ideal entrepreneurs. That's interesting because I would think mm -hmm. that women would be more risk adverse. Yeah. So that is interesting because, um, there is another fact that shows that we're not, that we are a little more risk adverse. Um, so it's going to completely contradict, uh, but we're risk adverse in different ways. Um, now what to me is sad is, you know, women are not opening businesses because they're so risk adverse. However, that's a positive because what they don't do is take unnecessary risks. Ooh. So I think that's the difference. Whereas, you know, men are a little more willy nilly with taking risk and they're not as well thought out. Um, and so there's a lot there. And again, um, we're detail oriented. So if you're so detail oriented and you're a planner, then you're going to see, hey, this versus that. Should I take the risk? Should I not? You know, how are we going to move forward? Um, yeah. So I think that's really interesting. <laughs> I got to call myself out on this. There's a lot of this shit that I'm of the complete opposite. So I feel like after reading this, I'm like, it's official. I'm a man. <laughs> oh, what you mean you didn't know? I know. <laughs> it's official. I'm a man. I love that. That's the first thing that comes to your, to mind when you were reading this. It's like, nope, not me. That's no. not me. Okay. I was clearly born a man and just didn't yeah. know it till now. Well, you know, what's funny is my, I was going to bring up my mom. I feel like my mom's in every goddamn episode. <laughs> she is our third co-host. 
But I mean, ever since I was little, she would always say that she had penis envy. <laughs> so I'm just thinking, I'm like, yeah, we were just, you know, we're just men. So no biggie. <laughs> Um, but I do love this one too. And I think this one is very on brand for us that women, um, maintain a good work-life balance and they, they place a greater emphasis on family life and far less likely than men to let their family suffer, suffer as a result of their work. That's powerful. It is really powerful because again, what did COVID give us? It gave us more of like, oh, wow, we actually want to pay attention to our work-life balance. Yeah. (laughs) And so, um, but if, you know, women that are already running companies. And I think that this is definitely something that I've done a really good job at is made sure that not just myself, but employees have a good work-life balance. Like I'm always like, nope, you're out. Uh, nope, you're on vacation. Like we're not, we're not, we're, you're totally off and taken off your calendar. I'm, I mean, I would always take, um, even in commission jobs, you know, with techies, I would always take over their desk yeah, and they would get their same commission and be like, oh, you're on vacation. Bye. <laughs> I love know? that. I was actually going to mention that with regards to you, whenever I saw this bullet um, on here, I'm like, that's so you that, and I can say that I've noticed a difference in working for um, you versus working for, you know, historically, I've pretty much always worked for men. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's also very telling, but I've pretty, pretty much always worked for men. And I definitely, not that they said you couldn't go on vacation or whatever. It's just different with, you know, you, I feel like you encourage more, not just vacation, but doing like showing up for your kids. You know, that post that I had yeah. up that we talked about, we're volunteering in a kid's class, you know, taking the afternoon off to go to a baseball game or whatever mm-hmm. it is. It doesn't have to be necessarily vacation, but making sure, you know, go take off to take your kid's lunch. You don't get these memories back. So I feel like it's definitely as a woman, you're, and as a mother specifically, you're way more understanding yeah. um, with just not only the vacation, but the day-to-day stuff that you have to do to show up for your kids when they're sick you know, and they want mom, they're going to come be with us. And so you're very much more understanding of that, where I feel like men are kind of like, you know, maybe have the mentality in the workplace, like children are, are not to be seen or heard. And you know, that's, it's kind of keep your work and your, um, your work life and your personal life completely separate. Whereas here, I feel like we also all share pictures of our kids and it's very much encouraged to be social and share photos of your kids and photos of your vacations and stuff. And that hasn't always been the case for me. Yeah. And then we'll think about just when we've talked about what it takes to be a good leader and a good manager, mm-hmm. it's empathy. Yeah. So again, this is why, you know, women make great entrepreneurs is because we're, I get, we're just built differently. I mean, that's, that's just the bottom line. Right. Yeah. Um, so, and whenever you bring that to leadership, I mean, it's massive. And that's again, why I think that when we were talking about the fortune 500 companies seeing 60% increase in ROI, like for sure, because yeah. that's what they're bringing to leadership. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, what's, what's nice finally is like when we talk about, you know, DEI work and like, okay, wow, women actually have to have representation here. And now and here's the money behind that. But what's crazy to me is that it had to take, they had to see the ROI, mm. you know, so mm-hmm. not even just with women, but underrepresented candidates. It's like, that's what took you to be fair. It's because now you're making more money from it. Okay, fine. <laughs> you know, let's yeah. talk about that. And I know I'm kind of going off into a different stage, but I can just get so fired up just because it's like, we're women. If, if you're listening, women, you guys are fucking awesome. You are badasses. You multitask. You're, there's so many just benefits. And again, we're going to go into it more, but there's just so many benefits. And there's no reason why you guys shouldn't be opening up businesses because mm-hmm. it comes with so many benefits. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Massive. Well, I mean, I'm, let's keep going and talk, telling our listeners how amazing women are. We could talk about this all day, but um, <laughs> so women, um, I liked this one a lot, less impulsive and frivolous in their spending in business and leadership positions than men. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I would have never thought that that would be the case, but um, that, you know, women are more conservative in their spending in business. I think it's because there's that stereotype with women that well, all we want to do is shop. <laughs> yeah, you know, shop nails, Botox, the whole kit and caboodle. We should right. take care of ourselves, <laughs> right? The hair, all of it. So yeah, it's interesting to me that in business we typically have our kind of tight wads, is what this is saying. But I have a lot of respect for that. But curious to know your thoughts um, on spending in business and how that compares <laughs> to men. I know you're trying hard not to laugh. <laughs> I'm not really trying that hard. <laughs> Well, yes, as we all know, I'm a giant spender. <laughs> um, I'm always like, oh, what can we buy next? Oh, a new tool. Cool. Like, let's not use it first. Let's just buy it. Yeah, no, it's yeah. I'm, I'm awful at that. Um, yeah, no, but 
I get, I, I know that I relate this a lot to being a mom because like, how can I not? I'm a mom, but it's like, yeah. you think about all the things you have to spend. Um, and, but women, even when I was younger, again, I've always been a spender, but then I've always related it to like, like a couch. Like, let's just say I spent a thousand dollars on a couch, right? And yes, I did that when I was really young. Why would I spend a thousand dollars on a couch? Well, I did because, but I justified it because, um, how, how often am I going to use this? Use it. How many days a week, how many years and all of these things. And how happy does it make me as I walk by it? You know? So, but I think, <laughs> so what I'm getting at though, couch. <laughs> it's a goddamn couch, <laughs> you know, I only brought it up because that was my first big purchase. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. But, um, I also think it's because we can be very practical. Like, even though, yes, it sounds like a lot where it was young and bought the stupid couch, but, um, think about it with business is be like, sometimes you can't afford not to do things. Ooh. And so that's my perspective on it. You know, it's like, do I have the money to do this in business right now? Do I need this tool? Do I need this marketer? Can I afford not to? Cost of inaction. A, oh, that could have been your broke to boss tip. <laughs> what is the cost? Well, you're, luckily for our listeners, you're going to hit them with the broke to boss tip. Ooh, this time. Yes, I will. <laughs> but I mean, we could do a whole episode. We say that all the time in tangent, but we could do a whole episode on cost of inaction with specifically with regards to recruiting and what we know. Because I mean, of course, there's cost of inaction to everything that you do. But with what our area of expertise in recruiting, I think that'd be a really good episode because it's, I mean, even biz dev and stuff. I was reading another article yesterday that was like, just go for it. Quit overthinking it. Um, and I, I think I say, I did save it. I almost tagged you in it, um, but it was on LinkedIn and it was like, quit overthinking, just go for it. You're going to hear a million no's in biz dev. And mm -hmm. um, it was talking about basically just quit overthinking everything you do in business. And it was from a woman who was a solopreneur and was talking about how she just ah. could not afford to overthink things. So mm -hmm. whether it was biz dev, whether it was um, sending over candidates or sending over a client, like whatever it was. And she kind of listed out some, some things that she related to of like, this is where you can't overthink. And basically I interpreted that as cost of inaction. You're overthinking, you don't end up doing it. You get in your own head. And that's kind of what it was about was that, which I think is also in line with this episode and what we're talking about. I think women or I know for me, I can tend to overthink things or get in my head. Whereas I feel like sometimes I do have these moments where I'm like, a man would just do it. Kind of like mm -hmm. job descriptions, how we talk about where, you know, if a woman doesn't meet all the requirements or check all the boxes for a job description, she may not apply. Um, I think that can apply to other areas in business for women as well, where it's like, you feel like, okay, if I don't check all these boxes or, you know, going back to imposter syndrome, and it's mm -hmm. like, no, we have every reason, right, to be there, right, to, you know, message that person, whatever it is. But what's the cost of inaction? And I think that's been helpful for me to reframe my thoughts versus thinking of it as imposter syndrome, reframing my thoughts. Like, what, what's the cost of inaction here if I don't do this or if I don't take action or if I, you know, don't show up a certain way or whatever the case is. But um, I thought that was really powerful because women can definitely tend to be overthinkers. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we got to stop that shit and open yeah. more businesses. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, ooh, so women tend to be better at relationships and networking than men mm -hmm. and communication and negotiation. Sorry, guys. Like we're just going <laughs> in on like, this is what we're better at. How many hands do you have? But um, no, I, we're not knocking our men. I just definitely think the men that probably listen to this and if they're listening to you and I like, cackling hens over here, you know, on this, this podcast, cackling hens. they definitely, <laughs> basically, <laughs> but, um, they definitely have a lot of respect for women. If they're listening to us chit chat and shoot the shit over here. So, um, I think that they won't be offended or won't feel that applies to them. No, um, for, for sure. But I mean, just like, uh, there are more women in recruiting and so naturally in recruiting, like it's all about networking. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so I think, um, also that women have like just deeper relationships, which then in return, they're just better at communication. Mm -hmm. Um, so if we're such strong communicators, obviously that goes a long way in business. And then, um, if we're talking about negotiation, now here's the thing, this is something that we could, we could battle, even though I, I found this, that we tend to be great at, at negotiation. Statistics show that actually women don't negotiate their salary. So I was kind of wondering in this article, where did we get the negotiation from? Like, what are we actually talking about? Are we talking about when we're working, like we're collaborating as a team and we're just, you know, kind of, we're, we're delegating and, and we're negotiating, I guess, our time. 
Mm. Perhaps we're better at that. I don't know. Sorry, woman. I don't know if we're better at negotiating in in business. I'm not sure yet. But how do you feel? I kind of feel like, and I mean, I don't think our readers or readers, sorry, I don't think our listeners are going to necessarily agree with this either. But I would say we're kind of a, like, it's a combination of communication and negotiation. We're better at compromising. So maybe that's where it's that's like, where it's coming from. Yeah. Yeah. We're better. I feel like women are better at compromising. There's not as much of an ego. We're just like, get it done, which is another great point of why we're better at delegating because we tend to take more of a collaborative, collaborative approach, a collaborative mm-hmm. approach. And I, I think that's very spot on for women. Yeah, no, totally agree. Absolutely. Yeah. And then what's interesting I thought is, and the communication factor is it's because we use verbal and nonverbal. I thought that was interesting. So I was thinking about uh, uh, like a lot of my interactions uh, with men in general and versus women. I'm like, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> We're a lot more animated, right? Mm-hmm. Well, and I feel like with women, it's every, you'll see memes about this all the time, but every woman has a look like that's like, <laughs> and we've talked about this with regards yeah. to our kids, you know, that we have a look and it's like a, you know, you know, and they know what it is. I don't think my husband has a look. I don't know if you're, uh, if Lincoln has a look, but like, that's just, you know, what's what he's thinking and what he's saying. It's just written all over his face where I feel like women, to your point, nonverbal, we're very animated. You know, when we're excited, you know, when we're happy, you know, when we're pissed off. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, excellent communicators. I would say is spot on. Especially yeah, for comparatively sure. speaking to men. Yeah. No <laughs> I, love since I know you're, since you're, I know you're, um, you're identifying as one as per this episode. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, you know, I just want, um, it is so funny because I I do have men tendencies as I look at this list. Um, but you know, I'm just such an advocate for, for women and just to stand up and just really build their own future. You know, that's like, that's, what's important. And it's like, if women, we want more work-life balance, because that definitely tends to be what, um, where it comes from, go grab it then go be your, go be your own boss. Like that's, that, that's definitely what I want to get out of this episode, because I think that, um, you know, we're so hard on ourselves and we talk about that too. Like, even though like we're both, you know, super successful, we've done all of these wonderful things and we look confident as hell, you know, we're definitely hard on ourselves. Like there's always mom guilt, work guilt, the whole kit caboodle, but it's like, man, we have so many amazing qualities as women and we've been through it. Right. I mean, like, let, let's get nasty. We have periods. Okay. That's fucking hard. <laughs> you did get nasty. I'm like, oh. I did got nasty. Sorry. I know it's gross, but I'm just saying like, there's just things that we have to deal with as women that men don't and we get through it and we charge forward. And it's like, we, I don't know. It's like, why are we not, why are we not being entrepreneurs? <laughs> I, I probably would have gone with, we have babies. You know, okay, well, like, same. <laughs> well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to reach women well, that aren't this? always, aren't, aren't also moms. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good point. You know? Good point. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a laundry list of things that women do that men don't, that like we could really go like this, the shit that we have to deal with. They don't even have to pluck their eyebrows. So when you really think about the fact that like we get down to the nitty gritty <laughs> of the shit that we have to deal with that they don't, where it's like, okay you know, we're badass if we have to put up with all of these things or do all of these things or to your point, handle periods and childbirth and all that stuff. But Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I love the core of this episode, the core focus or the core message is, you know, just go out there, grab life by the lady balls, because I know you're all about lady balls, grab life by the lady balls and, you know, make your own way, get the work-life balance that you crave, be your own boss, whatever it is, make the t-shirts, you know, these sayings, I think mm-hmm. I'm just amazed at that too. You know, I was like, Oh wow. I would have been talking about making shirts with little sayings forever. And then it's like, it's so easy to go and just do that, you know? Mm-hmm. So just take the initiative. Um, curious here. What's your broke to boss tip for our listeners? Well, I feel like you just took it. <laughs> oh, make the t-shirt. <laughs> no. No, it wasn't. No, but oh. you were just, you were just vibing. You were just going for it. No. Um, so oh, yeah. I, I, my broke to boss tip, and I know that I talk about this in a lot of different episodes, but it's just so relatable here is build your affirmations and manifest. So when I'm talking about affirmations, um, you know, as if you guys don't know, we have a millionaire recruiter program that helps, you know, people become entrepreneurs which is to start their own recruiting agency. And so what we're doing is we're making sure that we're attacking 
billionaire recruiter brain and CEO brain, right? So what I'm getting at is that you have to believe that you belong. You have to believe in yourself. And so we're having them build their affirmations. And so, someone gave me one and I was like, okay, I guess you don't really grasp what an affirmation is. It's because this person was just focusing on business. But it's not about business. It's on what's inside internally, you know, the heart, with the brain, all those things. And so really the broke to boss tip is you can do this. Look yourself in the mirror, have your post-its. I'm looking at my post-its right now. You know, it's like mine says, I will win this recruiting war. I can do whatever I want to be successful. I'm great at making money and will continue to make tons of it. That's what I have on my post-it. You know, you guys can do whatever you want, right? But it's like, it's, it's what drives you, what um, I am amazing, I am awesome, you know, like all those things. It's like, say it until you believe it because you have to start walking tall. You have to build that confidence inside you and you have to just go for it. And honestly, what is the worst thing that can happen? Boom. That's it. Yeah, that was so good. I mean, I'm, I have chills right now as you're saying that. As you were saying your affirmations, I'm like, I love it. I love hearing what your affirmations were. And I, I would love for our listeners to share some insight um, once this episode goes live with what their affirmations are. I think that that's really powerful because as you mentioned, a lot of people don't know what they are or think that it's just about business, but it's like, it could be about business, but it, it, it's more about you as a person. You know, what do you mm -hmm. wake up every day and tell yourself when you look in the mirror? Yeah, I like I that. that. Powerful. Mm -hmm. um, side note, because I can't help myself. Are you watching Shrinking? Um, I am on like the end of episode one. So I started it. I'm past where he's in the pool, you know, yeah. with the girl, but I am a huge fan of his. I think yeah. he's fucking he's hilarious. Like and so, yeah, um, it's definitely in Harrison Ford. I love Harrison Ford too. Oh, of so. course. Great show. Um, so, so then you don't know that he has this really amazing gay best friend, but he, he says, everything just goes my way. That's his affirmation. Everything just goes my way. It just works out. And I fucking love that. Like, and the way you way. said that, it was like, everything just works out. Oh, yeah. You did a little shoulder thing. Like it was like, <laughs> everything just works out. I love that. That was like your that's affirmation. Funny. I believed it when I you said I love it. Oh, yeah. I love it. I was like, why is that not on my post-it? Actually, it's going to be. I'm going to put that on my post-it. <laughs> right fucking now. Put it up there. Slap it on your computer. And just remember when you're saying it, everything just works out. A little shimmy. <laughs> I love it. All right, women, men, again, there's so much room for everyone to be amazing entrepreneurs. Take, you know, freaking life by the lady balls, your real balls, whatever. Uh, but, <laughs> but this episode definitely was because it is, you know, National Women's Month. We wanted to, you know, show some love, so show some support. And we look forward to you guys joining us as entrepreneurs. Thanks, y'all. See you next week. <laughs>